Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Hang. This week, we I am so excited to have Phantom alumni Laird McIntosh on our Hang. He's someone I've been looking up to since I was stage dooring back in Toronto when Phantom of the Opera was at Pantages Theater. And Laird was Raoul. He started the ensemble, became Raoul, became a Phantom cover. And he's had a long tenure with the production here on Broadway. And I wanted to pick his brain about that and just hang out with him because as you will see, Laird is one of the kindest, nicest people you'll ever meet. And he's a phenomenal artist. And I just love his how he is on stage as he is off stage. I hope you enjoy. It was after Phantom left Toronto too, the, because of the way it left, I think with Live and going Imploding. bust. Yeah. I think that really had such an effect on in the industry in Toronto because Mervish, everything went at its high at its highest, yeah. you had Mervish doing a lot of great things, Live End doing a lot of great things, and this, you know, you get smaller, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not ground, like roots, ground roots mm -hmm. sort of theater uh, sprouting up everywhere. So it was thriving. You're right. And yeah, I think the, success breeds success, but once that went, it sort of like, thing became desolate. I think so. I mean, uh, yeah, it... And I don't it, think we've recovered since. No, in those days... After live end, I ended up going to Stratford, so I wasn't. I was there for a bunch of years, and I wasn't in Toronto trying to make a living as an actor. So I didn't really. I probably wouldn't have been as conscious of it then. But I, I think you're absolutely right. Like at the height of that time when live end and Mervishes were really competing, that makes like obviously yeah. that competition made for incredible. There was a decade there when it was just you know unbelievable stuff. Well, there going was second on, Broadway to when, yeah. it, when it came to like people traveling to see certain shows, you know, mm -hmm. like Ragtime started there, Fosse would start there, Showboat, all the new versions were created. That was the sort of out of town tryout. Right, right. And then we'd have long sit down productions and things like Les Mis, Miss Sagon, Phantom, that brought people to the city and right. kept actors working. It was so inspiring at that yeah. time. We've already started the podcast, Laird McIntosh. Yeah. Welcome to The Hang. <laughs> We're going to use some of that. And I just will continue talking about Toronto and start from back then. First of all, welcome. It's great yeah, having thank you here. You. This I walked in here and I said, this is the this is the pad of a Broadway star. <laughs> this is a Broadway star. Look at this, man. I, this is well, amazing. I, I can't wait to meet that Broadway star when he arrives <laughs> and sees that I'm squatting in his flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. what are you doing here? <laughs> Listen, man, so we're talking about Toronto and that, you know, at that time when we met, I stage doored you. I'll never forget this. And to this day, I'll still remember, like, for some reason, not for some reason, you are one of the kindest people I know, For some, but for some reason, you're going, I'm going to get a bite. Do you want to come? And we went to Eaton Center right. at one of the restaurants across the road. And to this day, I remember thinking, because you were on as Raoul, you were Raoul. Yeah. And, uh, and I was just dreaming of doing that and then we're hanging out in the Eaton center and you were watching a game you're talking about the business talking about Cole Wilkinson Peter Carey was the fan of the time right and uh we were just hanging yeah and you were super kind to me and I remember thinking wow yeah I'm gonna do what Laird does as well because at this point I'm so inspired by Calm and Phantom and here we are I'm blown away that you look exactly the same so I need to know what you what you drink what you drink and what you don't drink <laughs> How have you I, kept your youthfulness? I don't know. I, I, um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I guess because I'm doing what I love, you know, I mean, that's, that's a part of it for sure. I know? love hearing that because yeah. also you have a tenure with Phantom. You're still, I want to yeah. say still there, but you go and come back. You've, you've been doing other things, but you've had a long standing relationship with this production as well as yeah. other productions around the world, but especially Broadway. And I didn't know you were back. When yeah. did you come back on this I didn't stint? know I was going to be back either because I left the show. You know, I was in the show on Broadway for six years and mm -hmm. was just super lucky to be. I always, after being in the Toronto production, I dreamed of doing it here in New York. And I tried hard. Like, I was auditioning back when I was in Toronto. I auditioned for the first time here in New York. Um, and I think I did three auditions in New York over about a decade. You Blows know, my mind that you have to audition for effectively the same people. Yeah, well, and, but they weren't the same people, you know, because we didn't have the same people um, 
in Toronto. But yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, to be honest with you, that's, uh, you know, auditioning, it, it, it never ends, right? This is something yeah. that I'm realizing, like, I would like to think I'm sort of mid-career now, you know, and I'm definitely mid-career, maybe a little bit further. And um, that's both a reality that I've had to come to terms with and also something that frustrates me. You know, I'm certainly not, uh, you are, I'm sure, but I'm not someone who ever gets, like, offered a role, right? Um, Oh, maybe I maybe I'm maybe once or twice I've had things that have come to me you know that that I haven't been aware of or haven't been auditioning for right um, but uh, yeah that that's a reality of the business right now I mean I feel like I get uh, hear about an audition and I'm I'm going in with people who have been in the business for one year you know and the people who are are putting the show on are looking at me like they you know they have no idea who I am. Not that there's any reason why they'd be like, you know, oh, Laird McIntosh. But there, there's no, now more than ever, I think your resume really, I'm not sure if it means anything, you know. I agree. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's um, and I think the business is really changing. Or maybe I'm changing and getting older. You get older and you, I've achieved a few things that I really wanted to achieve. And so now I suppose I'm more um, particular about the kinds of things that I would like to do. Um, but of course you can't, you can't pick anything you do in this business, you know, for yeah. anyone, I'm sure it picks that's you case, most right? of the time. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. But Toronto was, you know, the thing about meeting you was that I suppose like 10 years before or five years or seven years before that was me stage dooring people. Like when I was in, I had first come from Western Canada to, from Calgary, that's Alberta right. is where I'm from, to Montreal. And I was going to a dance school in Montreal. Because yeah, you were a full, uh, full on dancer, right? Yeah, I had a, like a five year period where I was absolutely focused on, uh, on classical dancing. And wow. uh, um, I went to a school in Banff. The fine art school in Banff, but I was in the the acting program, and I, I had been studying singing from a very young age. You know, I just was like someone who loved singing, so I was, I kind of had the beginnings of that under my belt. But when I went to this program in Banff, they also had an opera program going. They had a ballet program, and for whatever reason, I had been down to Toronto looking at at theater schools. And nothing felt like, oh, this is the place I want to go. But I met these ballet dancers, and I was curious enough to go watch some of the, the classes that they were having. And I, I don't know why. I just, I loved the, the aesthetics of it, you know? Like, I looked at it and thought, that's something I can do. And for some reason, I, I liked the, 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 the dancers themselves, and I, I liked the kind of um, atmosphere of mm -hmm. that work in the studio, and when they do the bar at the, before the rehearsals, you know, it's this kind of, um, I don't know, this rigorous set classical kind of standard that I got sort of hooked on. So I told my parents, you know, I'm going to go to this ballet school in Montreal. And they'd never, they knew nothing about, my parents were very supportive of the idea of like an artistic kind of life, but they weren't artists themselves. Right. And they didn't really know anything about ballet. Um, but they were like totally supportive of it. And then I, then I got down there and um, I did dance professionally for a couple of years, but it wasn't, um, I always had something in the back of my mind like, oh, maybe it's not quite, you know, something changed in me and I realized I wanted to do more continuous singing. Right. Um, you know, and I think that's like always a, a difficulty with artists is you have a million things going on. You want to be, that's part of being like, changeable and kind of multi multi uh, personality kind of thing you want to do different things and so um yeah so i i ended up getting you know leaving the ballet and um and around that time got into phantom uh and was uh so did you start oh, as raul no i was in the ensemble but uh, what i was going to say was that i was in Montreal, and this touring production of Cats was there, and I loved Cats at the time. I loved that show. And I was at the stage door with the same kind of impulse, you know, like an energy that you had of just showing up there, didn't know anyone, and just wanted to stand there and meet the cast and talk to them. You know, like I think when you're young, you're very, you have no um, inhibitions about that sort of thing. No, and when also, I, I wasn't. There's no social media, so I wasn't there. Right, right. It wasn't about getting a photo. I wanted 
to talk. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that is, I mean, this is the biggest change that we're living in now, right? Yeah. I mean, this has changed the world for sure, for sure. Yeah. It actually gives me anxiety now, stage door. Really? I mean, like, it's just, it's, there's so much, it's, it's, it's odd because you, you're there to connect, but I don't feel there's a connection. Where if, if we're walking in the street and someone recognizes you and they come talk to you, it's a, it's a different experience. It's more like, hey, and we can talk, and it's a bit more calm. You're not rushing. You can actually engage. Yeah. With stage door, so fleeting, and there's lots going on, and videos and cameras. I don't know why, but I'm just like, I find that overwhelming now. Where if you pump into someone in the street, totally different experience. You're like, yeah, it's, of course. Because I do like that connection and that engagement, but it's... That stage door feels, I don't know, it feels fleeting, yeah. which well, is Well, I mean, you, you, must, you could write a book about it, I'm sure, because you're dealing with genuine, you know, uh, I'm sorry, you're, you're dealing with genuine stardom, right? So you people are, there's a lot of people that are, I mean, I don't have that experience at well, the stage door. I'm no Leah Michelle. You know, what she's got to, yeah. what she has to, what, you know, they're there for her. I get it. Um, I've, I guess for stage door, I've had to stop too, because there has been certain incidences that and stuff that's ongoing which i'll tell you about off camera which now it's like we just can't do it yep yeah but, we've that's that's funny we've i've experienced that too which we'll talk sure about. Yeah, yeah smaller degree but, but it's i do miss those times where it was <clears throat> i guess smaller you know and you 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 could engage more and stuff but going back to you so you're that so you felt that as well when we met because yeah, we're, well, we're not dissimilar in age no, I, well, I think I'm you look 10, like 10 years older than you, I think. No, you're not yeah. over 50 now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am. Yeah. No way. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have put him over 50? No, no way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know. You're very happy, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> you're very happy. No, I mean, fortunately, I don't know, in this business, it never really, you know, you're, you're cast based on purely on what you look like, right? And even what you look like on stage, which I think is a little bit different than how you might appear you know a foot away from yeah. someone but um and energy right it's sort of uh you know some people i think are have a, have a much more like mature serious energy when they're younger and some people have got a kind of lightness about them and i'm probably in the 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 second half you know but um yeah well i was exactly the same way i was super curious i had that sense of like you know i had a kind of sense like i'm one of these people and, and I just have to meet them and be able to talk to yeah. them. And I'm, I'm sure you had that instinct as well, you know? And so I, I was always very, and I still am very sympathetic to people when they come up to you at the stage door and are, are like saying, I want to do what you're doing yeah. and how do I get into it? And, and um, you know, I'm always aware, well, because of your story, I'm always aware this could be the next Ramin that I'm talking to. <laughs> it's, I get that too. You know? Every now and then, you, I don't know if, if you're like that too, mm. where if, when you do sort of see people who want to speak to you and you, you, you know, you get that sixth sense, but there's always like one or two, you think I'm going to talk to that person specifically. I feel like they got something to ask or say, and mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, you do. Yeah. I wish stage draw was a little different these days. So you can engage because even if it's a couple minutes, it's, it can be so powerful because again, we were that person too, Yeah, but right. it was at a much more humbling time. Because well, yeah, it well, wasn't so social media and like yeah. half the people like it's there to get a photo for their Instagram and this mm -hmm. and that. But you're like, but we haven't engaged actually. We yeah, haven't talked. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, that was probably an end of an era for that sort of thing. But you came with a, a school group to see Phantom, right? Yeah. You'd never seen time. it. That's right. And you had like the sort of epiphany watching the show that you're going to. And that was yeah. calm. Calm. Right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But I remember it like you, you just said something. It wasn't about it's when you said, I, I, I feel like I'm one of them. Yeah. And it was never like I'd watch it go, I could do better than that, or I deserve to be up there. I'm just like, yeah, this is how I want to hang. And that's what it was. It was never about anything other than why won't I be up there? Mm -hmm. Maybe that ignorance was bliss, but it, that's why I was able to kind of like, I was curious to ask you questions and talk to you and be like, mm -hmm. okay, so what's the path now? And yeah. try and copy your path or see calm's path or whatever and go okay what well, that resonates with me so i'll do that yeah because a lot of the time when people ask about success it's sort of like most of these paths have been done we just have to copy and paste and then find your yeah. own unique find style your own, yeah it's never it's very hard to tell someone how to do it in the business because if you ever do a master class or something like that 
young performers are always asking, how do you do it? What's the path? And parents of these kids are always saying to you, what, sh what should they do next? What do you do? And there is no one path. I mean, yeah. as you know, and you, I think, went on a real odyssey because you, you had already come to Canada. Then you went to London. I don't know so much about when you ended up going to England, but then you're over there in England. And that's when I heard of you again, was suddenly you're like, you know, you're, you're playing all these roles over in the UK. And, uh, you know, so you obviously, you found your own way to do it, which is, I think, what everybody has to do. You just have to try anywhere you can, and the path kind of reveals itself. Mm. Um, I think most of the time it's just showing up and being brave and not trying to control it. And it's really about checking ego. And nowadays with social media, my main thing is like, don't post your process. Mm. People are so quick to post the first time they try and sing something or show, I, I, you know, sometimes I, there's people who do show like where they F up or mistakes or whatnot. But sometimes I'm like, just do it. You don't have to film it. You don't have to post it. You don't have to share it. Yeah. Use that rehearsal process as a private thing. Sure. Um, I want to go back to when you were in Phantom. Oh, I was going to ask you this, though, because you mentioned master classes. Do you do master classes? Well, I do them not of my own uh, creating, but yeah, when I get ask asked you? sometimes to do the odd one here. Do you and get there. nervous? Because I've always turned them down because I'm like, I don't know why I'm going to part. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, no, I don't get particularly nervous in that situation. Do you I, go in with a curriculum like you know what you're gonna do or you just sit there and ask it's a q a and you no. just riff off that well a q and a's those are always fun and really easy if it's a master class where somebody comes in and you know they've i'll know in advance what songs they're singing and i don't always know what the right the show or the songs because i'm not a super musical theater buff you know which is probably you know not such a good thing but you know, like you know what i mean like so um yeah i'll have to kind of figure out what they're going to do and then um I think often in master classes, though, I'm I'm doing it with younger people. Though it's not like, no, I guess I guess I'm doing it with people who are right about to come into the business because people, the young kids are so much further along now, I think, than I was, and also in schools like every school, even up in Canada, but in the states, there's a million musical theater pro. It's so much bigger. Yeah. Than oh it my was. god! It's become cool. It's everywhere. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, where was this? So, when we were right, right. Yeah, yeah. If there was something like that, had there been something like that in Toronto or where I grew up in Calgary, I'm sure I would have gone into a musical theater program if I knew that that kind of thing was probably what I should have done. Yeah, you know, um, but. Uh, yeah, um, I, I enjoy that kind of thing, but I'm not, I don't, um, I'm not as, uh, I mean, I don't know how you, you know, you, how do you have time to do a podcast, right? You're so busy <laughs> all the time, all the time. And I think like I'm someone who likes not being busy. So that is also kind of a, sometimes I like to be really working hard in, in a very concentrated, focused kind of way. And other times... I have a side to myself. I don't, I don't want to be working at all, you know? So I'm getting to that point where I do <clears throat> want that, but I think, I don't know, it's funny. And I'm at, at 44 now. I feel like greener than ever. And honestly, to do this podcast was because thankfully I had, I am a busy person that this gives me an hour for you and, you and me to hang out. Yeah. Awesome. And it's odd that it's not on camera stuff, but I'm like, this makes us talk. And I'm still a fan of yours, so it gives me a chance to dissect your brain, hopefully, and, and learn something, but also give you the platform. So it gives me, this is actually a way to kind of stop. Yeah, well, you're, you're so right. I mean, I think we are doing less and less of this, and this last, I mean, I think of it as the last decade where social media has really become a part of our existence, or at least for me, I don't really remember everybody with the, you know, all the Instagram and mm -hmm. all that stuff before 10 years ago. It kind of coincides with my life in the States. And um, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely like, w over the pandemic, I actually became quite gun shy of, uh, maybe that's not the right word, but you know, I became quite shy of, of um, social media of post mm -hmm. like when when I was first on Instagram I was I took a real delight in it yeah. and enjoyed 
the idea, oh, I'm here at Phantom and I can take, you know, show a picture of a costume up close backstage and you get a sense of oh, relating. Yeah, you always very artistic. I was doing a lot of like these pictures that. and the fans were really into it because they see stuff up close and yeah, yeah. it was... Uh, and then you kind of find yourself going, oh, okay, that's what they like. I'll do more of that. And you're like acting sort of like, now I will, you know, to <laughs> yeah. satisfy the need of the... And then when I got... we end, My wife and I ended up ha being upstate in our house during... You know, we were very lucky because we were on the road with My Fair Lady and, and the pandemic shut everything mm. down. And we were super fortunate because we were able to just go to this house. For, yeah. I mean, we were up there for like a year, you know, or a year and a half or whatever it was. And um, then I kind of realized, like, a lot of people like just slowing down and not being on social media and, you know, posting a lot less. And that kind of took hold a little bit, you know. So um, you kind of reflect on, wait a minute, what am I? Because I'm amazed at how many people. Okay, it gives you a, basically a television studio in your, you know, and, and as, a, as a performer, I find I'm one of those people who's a bit... I am not an extrovert, you know, yeah. I don't like to, like, if I go to a party and somebody's like, sing a song, no you know, way. Uh, if I don't have a character to be behind, you know, um, I'm not as into it, you know, and so, and I think there are, there are performers that are totally extroverted and some who get in it because they want to absorb into a character, explore that, yeah. you know, and, and, and be in another person's, you know, body and soul and mind for that two hours or whatever it is and that that's more of what interests me but it's incredible to me how many how many obviously how many individuals want to be the star of their own television show whatever it is and will just broadcast any random yeah. you know like half-baked idea that comes into their head and it, it's so you get inundated on yeah. Social media. And because it monetizes now, so people <laughs> are you know, Sometimes you, you see people making money. I'm like, hmm, well, good on them. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's half-baked ideas. Or it's like, what did I just watch? But I watched it. <laughs> yeah, know? right, right. Oh, I'm as guilty as I mean, you know? I do too. Well, that's why I've, I've started reevaluating my social media as well. And, you know, I had an app that we're shutting down because that the business side behind, like, behind the curtain, so to speak, started changing. And while it's a good company, I just thought, well, it just doesn't fit with what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I want to now use like, you know, you have your different channels, your YouTube channel, Instagram, I guess Facebook and Twitter, if you go down that road and see it as pots and you just, okay, that's going to be for that. That's going to be for that. I'm now taking comments off. Yeah. So people can't comment. Cause I'm like, only because I'm going to end up going through it and good comments, I think are just as, I don't say harmful, but it doesn't help because it, uh, if you boost your ego, it's not a good mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. Or you'll find that one mm -hmm. naughty comment and you're like, oh, fuck, fuck. you know, like, <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> you know? So I think I don't, it's not going to be a message board or community for that. I, I want to offer stuff. And then if people want to talk about it, they got their own ways to talk about it, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not there for the praise or the hate. It's more like, well, this is what I'm going to offer. I hope you like it, whether it's a podcast with a song, a photo. A promotion like you know got concert coming up other than that then i'll delete the app off my phone so i'm not scrolling and when mm. i have something to post reload mm. it oh right wow it just takes a lot of our time yeah only because it's my fault because then the next thing you know i've been scrolling for 40 minutes i'm like i could have been reading a chapter in a novel right right if right, i've got nothing right. to do you know but that's for me you know so i want to go back because i do want to talk about how you like to because i we're very similar about why we get into business because the idea of like dissecting a character and all, that's what interests me into this. It's like, I don't know what you're like. When I'm on stage, I want to be the star. Yeah, great. I want to take control, be the man. When that curtain comes down, if I could snap my fingers, be home, watching TV, mm -hmm. perfect, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So going back to the height of Phantom in Toronto, was that an amazing time before oh, oh, yeah, the bubble yeah. burst with oh, live and yeah. crashing? Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, then as now, I couldn't believe my luck to be in that show. I just absolutely loved it. I, I thought I would never... Because the experience of just walking into the Pantages, because yeah. they've redone that. The oh, moment yeah. you walk in, you're, you're in the world of Phantom. Yeah, it was a beautiful theater. Yeah. And the production was um, everything that Live Ant always did. You know, it was 
like when I walked out on the stage on Broadway, I was like, wow, this is like time traveling. I mean, it's absolutely identical in every way. Um, and um, yeah, I got, I mean, Hal did come up to Toronto a couple times. Jillian Lynn came up. I met them both up Wasn't there. Wasn't she awesome? Awesome. Yeah. And I got to work with both of them on Broadway as well, which right. was really, you know, like uh, uh, something to remember. Um yeah, I mean, I loved it. I was I was there when I joined the show in 90... I mean, it was 30 years ago this That's year, crazy. right? I joined in 93. I don't know, I've said it. Laird, you look exactly the same, mate. <laughs> I wish, I wish. It's but, uncanny. You know, well, you had, well... You had maybe longer, <clears throat> floppier hair as well, but that's the only difference. Yeah, right, right. Well, that was back in the days when we had, like, the chops, giant yeah. sideburns, like, gigantic. I like, remember we were in Les Mis too. or something, you know, yeah. but... Uh, um, yeah, no, I, I, Calm was in the show. He was still there. I was there for the last six months of his run. So right. he left in the fall, I think, of 90... No, no, couldn't have been. Maybe the beginning of 95, something like that. That's right. And... Uh, I think it was December 12th, if you know. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm, I'm guessing, but it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't okay. matter. <laughs> right. So he was... I loved watching him. I mean, I was a real, like, bunhead for Phantom stuff. I mean, I watched... Yeah, I have to admit, I was pretty much obsessed with his performance. And I would finish my bit in the whatever it was in the first act and stood in the wings and literally watched every music of the night that he did for six months. I just stood there, you know, holding onto this ladder and watching him. It was because, and I thought, why isn't everybody in the wings watching this performance every night, you know? Do you know, um, as Angeras and, well, because, any show I could, I'd watch in the wings. And I remember even as Valjean in London, I'd be watching when I wasn't on a stage, on stage or needing changes. And the stage manager said, you're always watching. I'm like, what else am I going to do? I can learn, you know? Yeah. And whether it's something, even if it's a performance you're watching, I'm like, that doesn't resonate with me. But then it, it puts into question why you're, you're, you're always thinking, right? Mm. Otherwise, I'd be sat in my room. Yeah. Yeah, Which well... I'd probably do more no, so so... so more so now, but yeah, me too. Like that, but as I'm a like... young performer, you're hungry for that and definitely trying to figure it out. And and I was aware that like it was a lucky moment that I was in this show with him, you know. And uh, I did my first rowl with him, you know. And I remember he was very gracious. Like I remember he came out during the bows and did his bow, and then he grabbed me and like pushed me forward. Oh, mate. You know, it was really cool. And and. Uh, and I know that you ended up really having a relationship with him, and and because we we watched the you know the uh, the duet from Les Mis. Yeah, that, that's that's legendary. Well, it's what weird. a beautiful every, moment. Every now and again, My I'll God. get a call. Ramin, it's calm. Are you, <laughs> I'm in New York. Do you want to jam? Oh, great! And you'll come up and let's think. No, I'm sitting playing guitars with Colm Wilkinson. I'm, no and way. And I still like. There's still Amazing. that twelve year old in me. He's like, mm. holy shit! You got to get him on this. Well, yeah. he's so, you know, he's aloof now. He's, <clears throat> I think he's moved back to Ireland. Has he? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Is that's that right? I, that's what I believe. Yeah. Well, last time I saw him was at your opening night of Les Mis here in New York. I was there and I'm, it's intermission and I was walking through the lobby and I came around a corner and there's, there's Calm. And his voice, saying, he's oh, still there. How are you? <laughs> you know, and he, yeah, he's, he's. I mean, he was, uh, well, and that Les Mis performance, I mean, I was also, from my youngest time, I remember even before Phantom, like when I was in Calgary, I think it was, was it a PBS Great Performances or something? But they, they yes. had that broadcast of the Les Mis, I guess it was, was it the 10th anniversary yeah. or something? With so, Philip Quas at Royal Albert Hall. Now, how could that be? Anyway, I remember... No, I know what it was. It was the broadcast of the Tony, the Broadway, the Tony Awards thing, because it was when I was very young. So it would have been whatever that was, 87 or something that Les Mis was on the Tony Awards. Right. Or 87. I was still at, at home in Calgary, you know, and I just that 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 five minute performance that they did. I remember just being so struck as everyone was by calm. And and then, you know, to meet him in Toronto, it was so weird that all those like because Garth got all those performers up to yeah. Toronto to work for Live End that, I, I mean, you wouldn't really have seen up there in Toronto. I mean, that's another thing that he did. Unfortunately, they were, you know, they were Some other problems. robbing Peter to pay Paul. But, yeah. you know, I mean, they, yeah, they weren't making the cash they said they were making. But 
they had unbelievable people up there. So it was, it was very cool. But um, yeah, that's so cool that you have that, that moment, like, you know, the mantle being passed and him, yeah. you know, singing that duet together. That, that's, that's awesome. That's probably one of my favorite moments of the, my career because of what it meant. And who it was, and yeah. in that moment, I, I remember I couldn't even get through the soliloquy that night. Mm. I was like, Grr. but I want to, and, and you've, you've done more than fandom, but it, it'd be remiss of me not to dive more into like. Yeah, well, I want to dive into what 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 is the phantom reference on your Instagram? Oh, we can I can't talk about leave that. here without without. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that because by really? the time this comes out, it that should be announced. So we'll get there. Um, but I want to know about when you first donned the mask. What was that like? Was that in, that was in Toronto? Yeah, that was in Toronto. So, you know, um, just following along with what we were talking about, I guess being a little bit, you know, um, there's, there's a, there's a very potent mix, which is like, you know, confidence and total naivete, right? Which is, I had that. And, um, I guess I was a bit, you know, I was pretty bold when I was young and, uh, um, I can remember like, you know, I was in the ensemble, I started covering Raoul. <clears throat> and I think must have been, I guess I had started playing Raoul, but um, somewhere in there I said to um, our dance captain, you know, I want to start working on the Phantom. And I convinced her and she was very supportive and she was kind of my person who took it to the, you know, the powers that be. But I remember one of the conductors there saying to me, Laird, don't, you're still working on Raoul. Don't, you know, like kind of like this is sort of a, one step at don't a time. get above, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know, like don't start talking about. And, and I was, I was 26, right? Like, I think I was 26 when I played the Phantom for the first time as Man, an understudy. This is the same story. Yeah, so we have so, the same story. Right. So I was I was that that was in the day. Like I think you really brought in or were happening as this thing was coming where the the Phantom was getting a little younger, you know, because like when I was in the show, it was all Chris Gronendahl, Peter Carey, Colm Wilkinson, who were probably younger than me now, but they, at the time, I thought of them as older guys yeah. with a bit of the gray in the hair, you know, and they played that element of the Phantom that was like... The father. The father. And he's taken advantage of this idea knowing that she is associating him with her father. And, you know, she says in the story, you deceived me. Like I, I, and what's the line far from your father in gaze, you know, like he manipulates that idea that she's susceptible to this mm -hmm. missing her father and um, believing that he's the angel of music that her father talked about. And so there's, there's this young couple, Raoul and Christine, and then there's this, there's an older figure. And I, those lines have equaled out a little bit now. And I, I suppose that's like kind of a trend in general of theater and Broadway and all that, that, because when I was doing the Mary Poppins, uh, you know, I, I went into that show and thought, I'm going to be Bert. I'll, I'll understudy the role of Bert, the young, you know, and they saw me immediately as a Mr. Banks, you know, and I was like Which 35 part, or whatever, though. right? Yeah, it's a great part, great part. But I wasn't thinking in, in terms of that. So, however, <laughs> you know, like when I was in Phantom, <clears throat> at the young, ripe old age of 26, I was like, I want to play the Phantom, you know? And I, I think it was because I reacted so much, as I'm sure is the same with you, like, you know, you react to the music in that show and mm. the character is so potent um, that, well, for whatever reason, I thought, you know, I thought like, oh, I can do this. I think I can do this part. And so, um, you know, like I got, they, they were willing to take me as the second understudy or third understudy or whatever it was. That's great. But I did, uh, you know, I played it not a lot in Toronto, but maybe... Uh, 25 times. I didn't, I didn't keep track. You know, I don't, I can't remember when my first one was or yeah. my last. And I, but when I came to New York, I thought I'm going to have a little book. And I wrote down the date of my first, who the Raoul was, who the Christine was and who was conducting. Okay. You know, so I have this book now and I know exactly what oh, I Oh, really? Did. Yeah. Yeah. You still keep it? I actually forgot to keep it this time back. Like I came back in October 
they they needed a phantom cover in October, November of last year, just because they had a couple guys out and someone got injured right. and suddenly they, you know, I was off the tour, My Fair Lady ended and um, I got really lucky that's boom, suddenly I was back in, in Phantom, nice. but not in the show, just, just covering, right. yeah, covering in the wings. Oh, I got to tell you my Paul Stanley story. Yeah, Speaking please. of covering the wings, maybe I told you this before, but anyway, so then, and then I did two in October, November, and then um, this time I've done one a couple weeks ago and, uh, and my last show is March 6th and I'm doing a phantom on my last show. Cause I'm just March covering. March 6th and Monday? Yeah. Monday, March 6th. I'm just covering. I'm coming. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Can you I get tickets? Come. Sure. I can get you tickets. Sure. I'll come watch your last phantom. Really? hundred oh, percent. Oh my God. Count me in. Oh geez. I gotta, whew, I better start warming up like right now. I want to talk to you about <laughs> keeping your voice in longevity in a second. Yeah. Before, so you. Oh, March. So, dude, I'll well, be there. Yeah, I mean, oh, sure. Let me know. Oh, I'd love it. I'd be That'd honored. Be oh, my God. Well, to the cast, see the guy. It's I, too bad. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I've. I've this might seen, not be out before March 6th, but. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, that's an interesting question, like keeping your voice. Um, but, but let me ask you this. After a year of doing Banks, I, I don't know that role musically how far off is that from a phantom oh it's very it's a very there's very little singing in it mr banks or my yeah. fair lady yeah mr banks yeah mr banks that's Poppins. Poppins. sorry Poppins. What, what tour did you come off my fair lady it, henry higgins this sounds so, like what, what i was doing with cobra where we're like making yeah. up different titles i'm like oh no no this is actual mess yeah, yeah so the last three years basically i left phantom on broad i was in phantom here for six years on broadway right and, you know, it's funny, like, after Toronto, and 20 years later, I got into the show here, but I just was older and playing one of the managers now, right? But covering the Phantom. And, of course, I said, I will never, ever, ever leave this show now. You know, <laughs> having left it once in Toronto, and then now the opportunity to do it again here. And why? Still passionate about it? Of course, we want oh, yeah, security as actors and, and artists. And realizing that it's just the best job around. I mean, because, okay. yeah, well, I mean... If if you're going to be like, you know, a working actor in the business, and you get it, you you realize, which I didn't realize when I was 25 years old in in Phantom in Toronto, that the the how unusual a show is that runs this long. Mm. I mean, it's so unusual it's never happened before. So it, it's I just got to a stage in my life when I said I'm I'm sure I'm going to keep acting, and I'm sure I'll have 25 more years of being. I mean, that's how I was thinking of it. Like I'm going to be an actor until I'm can't do it anymore. Um, that's how I've always thought of it. And so you think, man, I'll stay in Phantom for as long as I can, especially because you you get the chance to play a great role, and it's also unusual when you're understudying because I don't, I did, wasn't just playing the manager, mm -hmm. Andre, you know, every once in a while I'd have this opportunity to completely change things up and you get to go on for the guy, for the phantom, which I loved. Um, and so, but then, you know, I went and saw the, the production of My Fair Lady up at Lincoln Center. Am I pointing the right way? Which way is south? Oh, the, up so this way. Yeah, way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, I saw that production and just thought, oh, if I can ever get into this, you know, and I told my agents and, and then the tour came up. So I went out on the road. We got shut down because of COVID, but we were lucky because we did come back. So, you know, I thought I would be gone from the city for a year, but I ended up being out of New York City for three years, basically, a little wow, bit more. And that's gone so fast. Yeah, it is just like time that disappeared. I mean, it's vanished. But so my question is then, okay, so doing that, what was the voice? Yeah, well, the the vocal demands of that were high, but not in the same way that Phantom is, right? Because famously, that role of Henry Higgins, it, you know, Rex Harrison was famous for having kind of, you know, sort of created this sing speak mm -hmm. way of doing, and it was written for him, for Rex Harrison in a very narrow, because he wasn't a singer in a, you know, like an octave, very small right. range. Um, and they did not, and a lot of the, the, the musical line is actually written in the score, spoken. It's not written like a line. Because right. everybody comes into Henry Higgins and says, I will be the actor who sings the whole thing, you know. But it doesn't really lend itself to that. Yeah. 
Um, it's better if you do that kind of speaking, sing, sing, speak sort of thing. But our director, Bart, Bart Shear, wanted the, this production to be very argumentative and what's the word, like contentious and not aggressive, but yeah, aggressive in a way. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to get the arguments out there and he wanted Higgins to be severe. And um, I found doing the show, I mean, it was a joy to know that I was playing that part, but we were doing one week sit downs, traveling on the day off Oof. during COVID. It was very hard to do it during COVID. And we would do a five show weekend and the show was three hours long. And like two hours of that was me speaking or shouting, you know? So I felt exhausted all the time. And okay. I just, this I was aware. Me, this what? is making me feel somewhat validated with what I'm going through, but carry oh, on. Really? Yeah. Well, I was aware that I was, my voice was really getting tired and was, I mean, I would be raw all the time. And I, if I ever tried to sing something, you know, I just thought, okay, I've kind of lost my voice for, you know. Um, Mate, this is exactly what I'm, so, okay. So yeah. if, I, if during that tour, let's say after show four, I'm like, go sing music of the night. Mm -hmm. You know, when you hit sore, that's called falsetto. Mm. Could you do it? I could probably do the falsetto more easily than I could do the, you know, the full note. Oh, really? On B. I'm yeah. the opposite. Yeah, like right my now, range came down. You know, I really lost yeah. that upper range because I wasn't working it. And and when I was doing Phantom in on Broadway, I was Andre is the exact same range as the Phantom. Yeah, so that's Andre helpful. sings that G sharp to A flat. And so I would be doing that every night. Perfect. You know, so it just kept your voice right in the pocket for singing Phantom. See, but I, I guess that's like anything. If I'm you, finding a year of Nick Arnstein. I'm going, I thought this, on paper, I didn't think Nick Arnstein was going to be uh, taxing. Mate, it is from, and I, I've realized now, it's maybe the shouting and then singing is so, it's down in your boots because it's that sort of old school swing. And then uh, temporary arrangement, okay, we found some juicy notes at the top. But I think with all the shouting and that tension and, I found Valjean easier because wow. at least Valjean, you park and bark. It sits there the whole time. There's almost a different care you take for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Where Nick Arnstein, I guess you can be reckless. So I don't know with Higgins, there's this reckless. Because if you, some nights you just, the energy's there and oh, it's bubbling. Yeah. Then afterwards, like, oh my God. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I just threw caution to the wind and thought I'm going to go for this. And I was... I thought, you know, when I get off this tour, I'll take a break, which is what happened. And then I'll kind of come back and see where my singing. Actually, that's something that I, I feel in my, the span of this career, you know, way back, way back in the beginning, I was interested in singing just purely for, there was nothing deeper than just loving music and um, a real kind of joy in singing. I was one of those kids, like, you know, in the house, I'd be just singing at the top of my lungs all the time. And fortunately, you know, my mom would be like, sing. She's like the phantom, sing. <laughs> you know, she loved it, right? And then as I got older, I became more self-conscious of it. And you're living in an apartment in New York yes. and you can't sing, you know, because the walls are thin and you don't want to disturb anyone. What do you do? Anyone. Do you sing into a pillow to hit the notes? I have sung into a pillow I to warm up before, yeah. I yeah. do it even in the dressing room still. I still don't like people hearing me. Right, I like, know. Yeah, it's, it's so um, that I would like to get back to. And almost to the point of, you know, if I'm out of a show for a while, I think I'd like to go back and try to. I never really felt like I grasped fully proper technique, you know, for singing. And I certainly these days, I think like I've found a way to do the phantom but um it for me it was always like i would be going to those high notes and just praying you know because uh and spent more so now you know because i i it's um and i suppose that's that's a part of the excitement for the audience is it's written in that way like yeah. it is not a it's not a pianji high c thing where it's written in that passaggio where the high notes are right on the 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 flip for a guy's yeah. Voice, Do you know what? Right? Sometimes I thought, man, if this was higher, it'd be easier. Right. Yeah. If you had that real high tenory voice, it would be easier. Um, but I don't know where it sits for me. It's it's hard for sure. Um, but that's that's part of. I think the audience is aware of that, and they're like holding their breath for you mm. as you go up to those notes. So well, this phantom is, and mm. everyone's like, you're on stage for thirty minutes. No, 
it's no it's much harder than you think it is and all i always say is anyone who says that has never done it yeah it's it's i would completely agree with that it certainly is the most the hardest most demanding part that i've done and partly it is because they want you to ha- there it is from the first note it's full of that yeah you know your tension and aggr- yeah yeah you're you're you 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 come off stage and you're you're um soaking wet with sweat you know and also the costumes are they look amazing but they're very the makeup and everything is very uncomfortable i, I don't miss that bald cap on the neck no that- yeah it would be on Ruins the pillow. Neck, the rubber would be all over the pillow. You get the every, stiffness. You get this, right. Because you'd end up carrying yourself. And I don't know what your process as the fandom is, but there's a different animal physicality to it. Then you add the tension here. By the end of the night, I'm like, I need to roll. Right. I, I would definitely start taking care of my body better. Well, I do now anyways. The way I work out now, I would never, I never was, was like that in Phantom, where I think it would serve me well now. Mm. But going back to, just to finish off what we were saying about your voice, when you finish Higgins... And you took that break. Did you find all your muscles were going back to where they were when you started doing Phantom again? Yeah, I did. Uh, and any I mean, concerns you had during the tour were they alleviated? So you didn't lose yeah. your voice? No, no, but I, I heard lose you my recently voice. as a Phantom on a recording. I'm like, man, you sound great. Oh, thanks for me. It sounds fresh. It's spinning out there, and it sounds like you're in control of it. You're doing what you want with it. That's what yeah. I loved about it. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, and yeah, if did, I'm perfectly did... honest, I've been warming up singing along with you. No way. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. That's cool. Well, um, yeah, I, it came back for the most part, except that I haven't fully explored, like really trying to, you know, um, get up into the stratosphere with those notes again, you know? Cause you're still but, off stage standby. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I'm an understudy too. now. So I'm just, you well, know, you're not on the, in the show. So you're not, no, no. So right, right now I am in the show. So a guy broke his leg in the oh, cast man. in the ensemble literally broke his femur took a tumble down the masquerade stairs during the show no yeah richard Poole, who plays lefebvre so poor oh, guy no. he he had extensive recovery and he was he's been in the show i think for like 24 years and oh, 11 months or something man. and he was not going to be able to come back because of the original closing date but then they announced they're extending for one month and he said i can come back from my therapy for the last month right so we had a guy, Stephen Tewksbury, in our cast who was filling in for him, and he got Sweeney Todd, so he left. And suddenly, once again, well they done, were like, called me, yeah, like a week before and said, do you want to come in and, you know, um, be this guy in the ensemble? And so I've gone full circle. I'm back. I'm in the ensemble covering the Phantom. And, you know, I go out there and have a little bit as Lefebvre at the beginning of the show. I have to say, like, I'm... It's special circumstances right now, you know, because the show is closing and there's such an f- emotional feeling in the theater. And it's and, packed. Yeah, and, I, and they, they were in a, in, a, in a pinch. And I said, yeah, sure, I'll come in and do that. And, uh, but I, it's after Higgins for all that time, it was so intense. I have to say I'm kind of enjoying being a little, having a little bit of a lighter load. Good. And then I get to once in a while go on for the Phantom, which is... Like, I'm like, this is the job to have, you know, you get to go out there and do it. And how was your first time back as Phantom on on this occasion, vocally? And at that point, did you feel ready? Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt ready. Yeah. This last time that I did a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I felt really good. I got prepared. My first one in November was like, I was just flying on adrenaline, you know, because I hadn't done it for three years, right? So you're tempted to sort of say, oh, I remember everything. And then, but when you get out there, there's a lot of complicated stagecraft, as you know, more than anybody, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with the performance or the Mm -hmm. performing of the role and singing. It has to do with like, where's this flame thing that I'm shooting? And where does the, you have to get off the boat and stick the oar in at the right time and not fall over. And the cape's got to not get caught under your feet. And, you know, all these different things that, or what you're actually thinking about when you're performing the role, but the audience is just seeing this, you know, what looks, it's supposed to be effortless. Yeah. And Do you like being up in the angel? Does that freak you out at yeah, all? Yeah, no, so? that doesn't freak me out. I like that. I like that because I know that people are going to be surprised when and you pop out. You know, when you're like a toad, madam, perhaps it is. <laughs> do you do what Peter Carey used to do? He would stand on the railing and no. lean down? No. <laughs> I, I think back now, and then when I was fan, I'm like, no fucking way I'm standing no way. <laughs> Why? No, no, no kidding. Well, they they now, we are carabinered. We're hooked onto the angel here. And there was no 
there was no uh, tether in Toronto. You Brilliant. just sat in the angel and you stood up on the thing and there was nothing. You Hold were just on for hanging dear life. on for dear life. Yeah. So. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no kidding. I know. I know. But Keep so tell me what. So, so can you can you say what this? Well, means? I'll say. Of course, everybody to... at Phantom was like. Yeah, I. Well, here's the thing. So, I've I've been approached to do this new production because we know it's closing on Broadway. Broadway Italia wants to do a new production of Phantom. That's going to hopefully do a world tour, and who knows? Maybe that's what will come back. We'll see. Wow. So they asked me, "Are you interested?" And then I'm always like, "I don't know, I don't know." And obviously, I've been going through a tough time and my voice and all that. But I, I for some reason, because when I obviously born in Iran and we escaped as refugees to Italy. Something just said, take the phone call. And it, my whole life has been, been about instincts, which s were very similar in that sense. So I started talking to Fede, and he said, Ramin, I got to tell you, transparent, the original production, as far as I'm concerned, is a masterpiece. And I've always thought that, because I said, you, we're, it's not about bettering it, it's about how do we continue it in this day and age of financial climates, because that's what it comes down to. Otherwise, it wouldn't be closing. If it was making money, it would stay. So I get it. And I'm like, for me, the star of the show is Maria Bjornsson. Andrew and Howe, amazing. But what it looks like and what she did to bring the story and music together is breathtaking. So the fact that he is such a fan of the first, now I'm listening. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm now just a fan. You know, I'm no longer a fan. I'm not part of the, any company. So the more we t started talking, I was like... And my commitment is so short. It's like a three-week run in Trieste, then maybe two weeks in Milan, maybe three weeks in Monte Carlo, and then it will go on from there. Oh, my God. And if I'm... Great places. As a fan, and then as a maybe a potential phantom again to help from ground up again, but still trying to hold on as much as we can to the original, like, don't change it for the sake of change. It's how can we continue the story? How can we continue this beautiful show that still touches everyone, you know? And if there's a way of... Because I do think it'll come back to Broadway, and to, if I can have a hand in that, why not? Because yeah. I want to see it back up. Mm. It should be here. It shouldn't be closing, but mm, again, I agree. it is what it is financially. I get it. It's. I think a lot of people don't realize how expensive shows are now. Like mm. It blows my mind. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan. So then I just thought, I'll put little, little teasers out there, and it's amazing. All these years, no matter what I put out, people will still talk about Phantom, and they'll correlate it with Phantom. So it's none of my doing. It's just, and I'm blessed that I can still be part of it. You know, I haven't touched the mask in like 12 years, you know? But then I do a little teaser. The ripples it cost, and even to like, as you were about to say, your production, and I think some of the higher ups there were like, why is he sweet that? I'm like, you gave me this clothes to wear. They sent me those stuff, so I'm going to wear it. But you know, I don't know if you're like bullish like me. Sometimes when when people almost want to say, don't do that, you're like, <laughs> you right. do it again, you know? I'm like, I'm here to just push the show and push like a bit of, you know, get some buzz going. But this is this is a, a another producer. This Broadway is, Italia, yeah. But Broadway it's working Italia. with Rug still. So it's in conjunction with them. So everyone's got their eyes on it. And obviously we want to do it right. We, oh. want, to, we want to honor that, what's that already amazing. amazing. That's amazing. I agree with you about the original production. I mean, I'm I'm sorry. It's uh, uh, I mean, I'm enthusiastic about any Phantom production, but there's a special magic. To, oh, I don't that. think it needs yeah. changing. Okay, maybe some of the tricks you can update knowing now, but because it's 35 years old. Yeah. But I'm not saying. I don't think it needs to be changed. Yeah. Just how can we keep this going but make it financially viable for everyone? So everyone's happy. I don't know. I'm not a producer. But if there's a way we can get this going, and and if not, man, I got to go to Italy, my the home that took us in when my country was sadly going through what it's going through yeah. now still. And I've always thought if I ever do Phantom again, I want to do it somewhere different, you know. Mm -hmm. I always in my head thought it'd be Japan, but alas. Where did you go in Italy when you first went there? Outside of Rome in Ostia Rome. by the sea, yeah. Right. That was my first home because I was in, when I was born in Iran. I was probably there two, three months, and that's it. And then Italy for the first two, three years of my life. Uh -huh. So that's going to be something special for me on a personal level. And then I, but I'm worried, man. 
I need to finish doing Arnstein. <laughs> oh, don't don't be worried. Don't be worried. I can tell you. I mean, I think no. Listen, I you are you kidding me? I mean, and the voice I think is a extremely resilient. I thing, hope so. And know? it's the oh, delicacy yeah. of Phantom that I'm finding I don't because I haven't used those muscles. Like if I go sing Bring Him Home now, hey, those that that delicacy of the prayer is not there. No, well, I think the I high think, rock stuff. I think okay. that will come back. I, I think you could get that back for sure. You, know, you compare hopes. that you you're gonna have to <laughs> gonna have to no i mean you're that's that's very exciting you're just you're so just i didn't coming. upset any of the actors did all, over there in Broadway. no 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 oh, not at me. all no 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 and and my wife polly just said find out what what's he talking about <laughs> <laughs> i thought you guys would have known no ramin i thought you were bringing me in here to tell me that i i said i think he's going to be doing it in the west end again and then and then then i thought wait a minute maybe he's bringing me in to tell me i'm doing it in the west end would you like he's to do it in the west surprise end? me and hand me them <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to keep doing Phantom? <laughs> yeah, of course. Sure. We should sure. get you to come hey, to if Italy you need, then. If you need a, uh, if you need an, a, an Andre, you know, give me, give me a call. I'll cover you. But um, yeah, it, that, that's you. I mean, you have years and years and years to be continuing with Phantom, and I think that's awesome. You, you should be for sure, man. That's why would you not do that? And as you say, I mean, the opportunity to be in. Um, wonderful places doing it that's something to consider for sure yeah yeah uh, congrats that's Thanks, amazing brother. that is amazing so oh, this you, is a secret though i can't say anything until i till till this airs well you'll have announced here and it now, before yeah hopefully they're going to announce it this week okay i thought they were going to announce it today when we're filming this podcast that's why i did that previous me deadlifting with the phantom shirt because i'm like okay hey, they're about to announce it. and they're like oh we're <laughs> delaying and i'm like well, now I've prolonged a tease. It was never meant to go this long. You were supposed to announce it last week. Well, I won't say anything. Um, May, I can't wait to see you as Phantom. Oh, my God. Jeez, talk about now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get into serious <laughs> no, warming want, up for the next two weeks. And we didn't get weeks. to talk about it much. Man, we got to have you back. But I wanted, to, I, would talk, I wanted to talk about how you would dissect a character. So very quickly, what's going on as Phantom and coming in a, as a cover and whatnot. Obviously... Obviously, I don't know how the Broadway production is run. It's its own identity. But do you still get to, do you feel like this is what my phantom I'm bringing to the production? Like, obviously, there's blocking. That doesn't yeah. change. But this, the psyche of the phantom, where, how you approach it, how your backstory, how you want it to, as an actor. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I hope so. We're, we're, and there's four or five of us who are doing it there right now, and we're all definitely different, you know? Right. And I think, um, See, I love that. Yeah, it has to be. I mean, there is a a cookie cutter is the wrong word because that makes it sound very. But there is a form and a shape to it that. Yeah, because there's lighting. Keep, there's because it works, you know, yeah. and, and also because it's what works. And um, but yeah, within that, I think I'm being myself, you know, in it, and that's people are always responding. I think to you know, you you bring yourself to it, you know. So I think that. That's what hopefully gives it it's the, the flavor that is you and makes you distinct from other people. Because people do, you know, the fans of the show, they come and see, they want to see all the different guys. They pick someone that they relate to more. And so obviously you are being an individual when yeah. you go out there and, and you're not just, uh, you know, some performance that people can't uh, discriminate from other ones. You know, which which is nice, I think. So, oh man, I'm so yeah, glad it's such to a see privilege. you. We're gonna have to do this again and also hang out some more. You too. The March time 6th. the time flew. Thank you. Time Thanks for having fine, me. Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good to see you, Larry. Thanks. The young for lad from from the stage door in in Toronto. Unbelievable. Who doesn't look so young? You, on the other hand. Yeah. Too bad we couldn't be like shooting a documentary from those early days of you. That would have been amazing. Or of us. We have well, a similar past, man. Yeah. <laughs> Both wore the mask at 26. I love that. Yeah, right, right. Awesome. All right, but will you come back at some point? Love to. Yeah, All right. anytime. Thanks for me. <laughs> okay. Man, I can't believe I could have talked for hours. Mm -hmm.